Hello, Tim's Tips here. I'm going to show you how to put a lift kit in a 2015 Sprinter van. It's a Van Compass one, and uh, I'm going to show you some of the tips I have. So here we go. So after virtually excavating a dirt road, I bit, dug a big boulder out of the road with the, the uh, hitch shown below. I realized I really need to get serious about installing this kit. I bought it for a little over $600, uh, and I was waiting to put it in, but uh, after a recent trip, uh, camping trip, I decided to uh, go ahead with it. And uh, it has dragged on many roads, little uh, big dips in the road. It'll This is, acts as a skid plate sort of to protect everything else, but I wanted to get this done, uh, protect that dump valve that... Uh, you know, black water tank dump valve. If that ever gets hit in a, during a trip, that's going to be a real big mess, if you know what I mean. Uh, make it easy to install. Uh, relatively inexpensive, less than a thousand. Uh, keep it simple. I did not want airbags. I had airbags on a previous, actually two, two previous RVs, and those systems are complex. Either they're complex with computers, or you have to keep the bags aired up. They tend to leak over time. And so before every trip, you had to check the, it's just like a, you know, checking a tire. You always had to pump that up and uh, no maintenance is my goal. So I had spent months on and off searching for resources, looked at, uh, first I thought Sumo Springs were the answer, but I realized they were really, um, not really a true lift kit. Um, and they were kind of similar to airbags. So I, I decided not to go with that. Uh, looked at compressors, airbags, and automated systems. Looked at Sprinter Store, Sprinter Upgrades, Alvans, but eventually went to a, a Sprinter Source forum and and see what they said. And they a lot of them recommended the Van Compass. So uh, this is what I ended up with. And uh, generally, this is supposed to be an easy uh, installation, uh, up to five hours for a do-it-yourselfer like myself, um, but uh, you know, it was fairly good instructions. I inventoried all the parts and separated them into kits. And uh, one thing I did not need was the sway bar. So that actually saved me some time. But even with that, um, I'm on my second day here between you know taking the tires off, bleeding the brakes. I'm uh, at about a two day job. Now before starting this job, I would recommend getting a new set of shocks in there my shocks are almost six years old and probably should just had them handy to pop back in uh, because you know the, the shocks come out relatively easy uh, but there is a uh, part of the lift kit is an extension or a raising of the shock lower shock area so uh, rather do all that uh, you know with a new new shock so here's my work area i did have a six ton jack stands which i'd recommend the two tons may fail uh, that's just on the borderline if you're jacking one side of the van and and one jack is, is taking a lot of the load i think uh, my my van could be up to ten thousand pounds uh loaded with water and everything so uh one side might be up to 2500 pounds uh which should be okay for a two-ton jack but i i had the uh the six ton with a heavy duty three and a half ton jack so here's all my tools that I've set up uh, a lot of different uh, tools required to do this uh, DIY. I've already removed the shock. Uh, there's many videos on that. But uh, the main thing I wanted to show you here was this lift block. So here's the lift block and it's gonna go in here. I've lowered the axle uh, from the spring and the lift block is gonna go kind of like this. I'm gonna put this in here like so. A kit here it has some new u bolt So here's the what I would call the shackle is right there, and then the u bolt is going to go on top of this. So it's going to go down into the holes. So I have the sprinter uh, jack here under the axle. Pump this up here. And then this rubber piece is going to be extended. I've already lowered the brake. Uh, the brake line I had to reroute 
underneath the leaf spring here. So once these uh, self-drilling uh, bolts were put in, uh, so there's threads uh, in the metal and they were just threaded in there and then uh, started to compress the bump stop with a, um, with a clamp and had to push on it pretty hard, but it, it compressed it about a half an inch and then it was able to stick it in there uh, very carefully with uh, wiggling and, and a screwdriver. And uh, yeah, then that's the, that's the kit. Um, this is the shock extension. Uh, since we raised the vehicle two inches, the shock mount had to be raised two inches as well. So this is just a, a little flyover of the finished product. You see all the modifications done. Uh, it kind of looks almost factory because it's, it's well done. All the parts uh, I think are meant to last a long time, pretty heavy duty. And then uh, bleeding the brake is next, and then I'll mount the tires. And I took it for a test drive, and this is what I found. A very good ride. Uh, no real difference that I can see. Uh, this is the before picture. You can see the distance there uh, between the tire and the wheel well. And this is different perspective, but you can see how much more that's lifted. Uh, two inches, exactly, as a matter of fact. And uh, I think it looks a lot better. And... I don't know that it will ride any different, but uh, it certainly will have more clearance. Stay safe out there. Please subscribe. Uh, use heavy-duty components and take your time when doing this type of job. Thanks for listening.